Hi guys, what's up? Toba Loco here. Welcome back to our Japan 2014 Brazil qualifying series. We are in part four of this one in the final round of Asia qualifying. Let's have a look at our group. So Japan are in a group with the UAE, South Korea, Iran and Syria. There's two tough teams in there, obviously, being South Korea and Iran. We've already played against Iran in the previous round, and now we meet them again. And then you've got your slightly lower rated teams, only slightly lower rated, I'd say, uh, with Syria and the UAE being two-star teams. So, going to be moderately difficult for Japan. I think we're going to run into a lot of resistance against South Korea and Iran, of course. But, um, you know, we should be picking up points against Syria and the UAE. So before we go into our match against the UAE, I don't usually do this on the 2014 game, but it is on world class. Um, slightly lower than my 2010 gameplays on Legendary. Legendary on this game can be extremely annoying and difficult. And I haven't really... Um, done it too many times to actually you know get a grasp of it so we're sticking with world class but it's still a competitive difficulty on this game so away from home then we are against the uae i have to say just quickly that this stadium is used far too much in this qualifying for any kind of team i played against in the asia zone either home or away it's this stadium this just generic bowl stadium over the top and Maeda has got it. Don't know why the UAE didn't really close that down. They're not really defending that well. Kagawa. And that's hit the post. Uh, UAE are struggling here a bit. And that just sails over the bar from the second shot. Okazaki. Shot is blocked. It goes out. And UAE content with just sitting back and doing nothing. A lot of these smaller teams do, do, do this. You know, they just... Um, you know, sit at the back, soak up the pressure and rarely go on the attack. On the ball here, it's been very awkward. And UAE in my box at the moment and it's just blocked. That's a half chance. <laughs> uh, I think that's all they're really going to get. Crossed in and volleyed over the bar. It's been a really awkward half for Japan. Not going to lie, it's been very, very awkward. Headed away. Honda's got it on the edge of the box. And oh, it was a very, very ferocious shot. Saved. And it's caught. We've had six shots and yet still um, yet to break UAE down. I just saw that South Korea are 2-0 up against Iran. Looking very comfortable in that game. Half time is 0-0 between these two. I mean, we are away from home. So, of course, the hostile atmosphere is going to be um, a factor. A small factor. Endo. And that's gone in. Yes, come on. And I just managed to get past the defence there by pretty much like running past them in a diagonal line. It's 1-0 to Japan. Finally, after 55 minutes and 8 shots, all it took was just to do that. Jumps over that tackle. Machida. Maeda. Good play. Hasebi. And that's gone in. What a goal that was. Good play to lead to that goal. And that's 2-0 to Japan. Come on. Very, very good move um, by Achida to link that play up and just smash it in at that uh, near post area. Well, it went into the far post, but yeah, goalkeeper had the post covered and yet still it went in anyway. Here comes Matar for the UAE. He crosses that one in. And... They still have it somehow and all just blocked by Japan. And that is going to be end of the game. A simple 2-0 victory over the UAE. Good victory nonetheless. And um, they, they made it hard for us. It was really hard in the first half to really break them down. They were very um, sort of annoying to play against. And that's good for them. You know, they made us wait 55 minutes for the first goal but then we got the second goal six minutes after and the game was pretty much done and dusted so that's three points for japan so our next game is going to be against iran we are at home iran have already lost 3-0 against south korea which is you know south korea basically handled them very well so hopefully we can do the same against them and uh, keep them below us in the qualifying campaign. 
we kind of want to make it a battle between Japan and South Korea. It's gonna. It seems like it's going to be a battle between Japan and South Korea because they're the best teams in this group. Iran are up there, but um, in terms of like star rating and stuff for this game, they are slightly below the two. Japan, go for it. Oh, <laughs> the through ball was so nice. It was just so, so easy to play. Look at that. There was a massive gap there. They almost um, conceded that, but it just floated over the bar. Soje crosses it in. Iran have got it. And they snuck it in for 1 0. And Guchanena Jad has scored. I hope I pronounced that correctly to make that 1 0. That's a really hard name to pronounce. But yeah, um, defending there wasn't very good. And Japan have conceded against Iran. That's 1-0. We almost scored at the start of this match. So Iran basically made us pay for being sloppy in front of goal for the first three minutes of the match. Comes Japan. Over the top. It's just cut out by Iran. It's not going to be easy. We played against them before, like I said. And um, they made it hard for us in the two games that we played against them. So, yeah. Just uh, need to get back into this game though because we can't fall behind. Especially if we got South Korea um, to play against after this game. Down to you. Now off to Okazaki. Can he put in a ball? It's headed and oh what a save. I think it took a deflection but I think the goalkeeper managed to... I don't know if he touched it or not. That was such a good move by Japan to get the goal. And that is an equaliser for Kagawa. Good passing play there. Um, into the box. Honda squared it across. And, well, it completely tricked the Iranian defence. And that is 1-1. And Japan have levelled it literally just before half-time. So who's going to be the one to come out on top? It's important for Iran to get points in this one because they don't want to fall behind. And it's also important for Japan because they need to capitalise on their win over the UAE. It's been a really, really difficult game for Japan. We struggled in this match to really get forward. Iran have had more chances in the second half, but only by about one or two. So... One good ball by Japan and it's all over in this game. But it's just finding it. Have an R into Honda. It's blocked. Iran have been too good defensively in this match for Japan. And we haven't really been at our best today. But it's okay. A 1-1 draw against Iran. I'll take it. I'll take it, you know, it's against one of the bigger teams in the group. We have faced them before, but they have been awkward at times when we play them. So, again, another draw between these two. It's interesting to note that Syria have just beaten South Korea by two goals to one, which means that, well, that's huge, really, for Syria. Really, really huge, you know. Taking points off of South Korea there, incredible. So the group is a little bit more close and um, we have a game in hand on South Korea. So we could go above them by about one point. The one that you've probably all been waiting for is Japan versus South Korea. We are traveling to Korea for this one and hopefully it's a good game. I really hope so. And finally, look at that. A different stadium. That's what you love to see. Finally, not just the random bowl stadium. Finally, a different stadium. Here we go then. Can we take points off our rivals today? Just like Syria did against them. It would be great if we could as well. I think this game, at the moment, seems to have nil-nil written all over it. I can't get forward and neither can South Korea. So... <laughs> Um, might be in for a bit of a dull one. I might have overhyped this a little bit. It's a good play, but oh, just offside that move. It's just frustrating because both sides have been good defensively. Look at that marginally offside. It's good through ball, but the goalkeeper's got it. That's the story of this half. It's just been nothing. Absolutely nothing from both sides. I just checked the halftime stats and zero shots in the whole game. Zero. This has to be one of the worst matches I've played so far. It's just nothing going on. The two are just so well matched that you just can't get past each other. Through ball. Here comes Honda. And oh, I went for the shot and it was denied. The game doesn't want any shots. That's a good ball. 
And that's a great save. Oh, that was the only shot of the game pretty much. And it was a save. Crossed into the box. Back header. And that's a shot for South Korea at the end of the game as well. They had to match Japan somehow. They had to. And that's end of the game. P quite possibly the most boring matchup between these two in the history of this rivalry. However, there was some... You won't see it that much on this footage or whatever, but there was a lot of good battling in midfield. A lot of like pushing and shoving and stuff like that. It really felt like it was like a proper rivalry game. I mean, look at the stats for that game. Look how even it was. There were more tackles in the game than there were shots. So that's your table. South Korea are still two points ahead of us. Japan have a game in hand, just like the rest of the group. We have got to play, I presume, Syria next because we haven't played them yet. So that's a good opportunity for a win. So our fourth match of qualifying is at home against Syria. Should be a chance for Japan to pick up some points. A win would be great. Of course, Syria are not going to be pushovers in this match. They actually beat South Korea. A feat that we actually couldn't do. Uchida on the ball. Good passing play. Look at this. And off the bar. Header. And that's gone in. Very, very lucky. Maeda scored to make it 1-0 to Japan. And, well, it just smacked off the bar. Landed on Maeda's head. It was looping. And I thought the goalkeeper would actually save it. But, no, he didn't in the end. And that's good play by Japan. That shot deserved a goal initially. But it's okay. We got the rebound. Here comes Maeda. Saved by the Syrian keeper again. It's going to be another corner to Japan. Japan have had lots of shots. Obviously, we've got the goal, but yeah, no more than that so far. Honda. Well, that's a decent attempt. And Honda's got it again. And he puts it wide just before we go into halftime. Lots of shots for Japan, but only the one goal as we go into halftime. Well, we're in the 85th minute and uh, nothing much is happening. Goalkeeper did make a mistake though out to honda oh there we go there's a mistake and that is 2-0 um well the defender didn't clear it i said the goalkeeper made a mistake it wasn't the goalkeeper it was the defender he just didn't get rid of it and that's 2-0 but again only through a mistake there and we played it off to honda who just smashes it in and that will be game set and match against syria and that is going to be end of the game. It is 2-0 to Japan. Very good result for Japan. Um, again, not the strongest I've seen them play. But then again, in the previous rounds, we played against Minnow. So I should take that into consideration. But um, of course, when we played the friendly matches at the start of this whole campaign... And, um, of course, we actually played Australia and Iran midway through this campaign anyway... Um, you know, and we did all right against them, but it seems to be we are struggling just a tad. So at the halfway point for the Asia qualifying, Japan are actually top of the group now after beating Syria 2-0. So that was our game in hand, I believe, and Japan are now top with eight points. South Korea have seven, Iran have five, UAE have four, and Syria have three. So it's still very much all to play for if we drop points then obviously the teams below us can overtake us um if we win those games we can start to pull away in group b like i said oman are quite comfortable at the moment they're really good on this game they really are i need to play them one day on this game at least and um China, Uzbekistan and Qatar quite close to each other. Yemen starting to slip away a little bit, but that was expected. If you guys are interested in the other qualifying groups, here they are. I'm not going to go through them all, but, you know, it's looking good so far. Group G in Africa qualifying between Malawi, Equatorial Guinea, Rwanda and Swaziland is looking insanely close. It's like the closest group I've seen so far. But obviously they've only played two games. So there's no real surprises here at the moment. Everything looks pretty standard in Africa so far. In OFC, at the moment, it's looking like this in round three. New Zealand are top, but Tahiti are hot on their tails. 
Pomopol was looking like this for the moment. Again, between sort of Uruguay down to Paraguay, it's looking pretty close. Um, even Ecuador could make a case for maybe playoffs if they win a couple more games. In CONCACAF, it's a little bit messed up um, because, you know, this is supposed to be, supposed to be round three. And um, obviously, this is supposed to be the final round. So um, that's how round three finished like that. Pretty much, it's very, very standard. Um, and that's how it's led into into round four. No minnows, really, apart from Haiti. Haiti are a minnow, of course, but um, someone had to go through. And, um, you know, Haiti have found themselves in that position before in in the final round of qualifying um but you know they are going to be the minnow and they're probably going to be squashed guatemala as well you can make the case as well semi minnow in that group semi minnow um so yeah pretty basic in concacaf and in uefa halfway through it's looking like this any surprises so far? Let's have a look. Uh, Wales, of course, topping Group A with Italy and Belgium in it. That's quite surprising so far. Hopefully they can continue. Look at Group B and look how many points the Netherlands have in that group. They only have two points in Group B. That's crazy. You know, I know Germany's in that group, but I mean, surely they could beat Estonia and Kazakhstan right to get some points and farm those teams you know or look at Portugal in group C as well only five points yet Slovenia and Switzerland are ahead of them um, I know it's still early days but still even like teams like Croatia as well in group F struggling five points behind Azerbaijan I've got nine points in group F that's so weird. <laughs> this, this qualifying campaign could be very, very different to my usual. And even in Group I as well, Albania are leading that one over France and Scotland. So it's, um yeah, that's what I love about randomizing the whole world. You know, it brings so many random qualifying groups, um, not just the same ones over and over and over again. You know, I understand why people want to see the actual groups because, you know, change history and all that sort of stuff. But when you randomize it, it's just so much more entertaining. So just beyond the halfway point, we have the UAE again this time at home. So hopefully this time we can get the same result as we did in the first game. UAE kickoff against Japan. I've made one change. I've brought on Miyachi for this one, the quick speedy winger from the bench. Maybe that will inject a bit of life into Japan a bit more because... In certain games, it just takes a while for this side to actually, like, you know, go forward and run at some teams. And especially against South Korea and Iran, we struggled against them in the first uh, part. Here comes Miyachi. See, it's all about the pace and it almost paid off there. Maeda up to Honda. There's a bit of a gap in the defence. Can Honda exploit it? It looks like he can. Can he get the shot off though in time? And it's just saved by the goalkeeper there. I'm recording this at the time of um, the Asia qualifiers for the 2026 World Cup. And I saw that Japan absolutely smashed China 7-0. That is actually insane. Like considering that China like have said publicly that they really want to improve in the international game and their own domestic league and stuff. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's going very well. Through a ball. Can we get it? Yes, we have. We just managed to get it. And Kagawa has gotten the end of that one. It's 1-0 to Japan just before the half-time mark. And this is great. Like Kagawa there getting in front of the goalkeeper before he swept it up and tapping it in for 1-0. Great pass as well, by the way. It's Kagawa's pace that outdid the defence. And yeah, straight in. I mean, even if we didn't get the shot off properly, it could have been a case for a penalty. Maybe. I don't know. This game's not very good with its uh, collision detection on the penalty stuff. Most of the time, if I did that against the uh, AI, it would give the penalty to the AI. I haven't shown it on screen yet, but Iran and South Korea are playing right now. And it's currently 1-1. So if those two can drop points, like get the draw, then that's fine by me. Because that means obviously both teams are uh, further behind me if we win this match. 
a lot of people commented on my uh, previous parts of this Japan series and said that the 2014 Japan were uh, a really good team, but they were just robbed by, uh, well, a few people said they were robbed by Ivory Coast and Drogba as well. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I can't remember Japan in 2014, to be honest with you guys. I th it might be a bit of recency bias, but I th honestly think that the 2022 Japan and the 2018 Japan were just a bit better in my eyes. Maybe because they went further in the tournaments that they played in. South Korea have taken the lead against Iran. That's huge, really, because Iran will start to fall behind me and uh, South Korea. So, yeah, we could get a goal here, though. It's blocked, and it's come back out off the post from the save. Fantastic save from the UAE keeper to deny Japan a second goal. And that is going to be it. A small victory. Not many goals, but Kagawa got the winner in the end, in the 45th minute mark, to make it 1-0 against the UAE. I'll take it. It's three points. They made it really hard for us, especially in the second half. They were really, really tight defensively. And it felt like Japan couldn't really do anything. Um, maybe I'm not really getting the best out of Japan here. Our next match in this qualifying group is against Iran. I played Iran like, I don't know, about four or five times now. I'm a little bit tired of playing Iran, but the matches we have played against Iran have been quite competitive. I'm hoping that we can actually stop Iran from scoring against us. Let's say be looking for it. Into the middle here. Endo. And it's tackled. See, look at that. It's just like glue. Sometimes the game is like this. Sometimes you'll have a qualifying campaign where the AI would just be so in form. I'm thinking because we played a lot of um, these types of sides. Hold on. Iran almost scored there. That's, um, oh, that was so close. But yeah, no. Um, the defending by these AI teams in this qualifying campaign has um, really made Japan work for um, these goals, especially in the latter stages of this uh, campaign. At the start, we were blowing away people like 5 and 6 nil, stuff like that, but obviously they are tiny teams compared to um, the opposition we're facing now. Rubel. And I think that's Kagawa that scored again on the 45th minute. He loves that minute. And that is 1-0 to Japan. And I felt like, you know, Iran got caught there. They were trying to press. We dispossessed them in the midfield area and we just pressed through ball there and then obviously just slotted in by Kagawa. And Kagawa is stepping up in this one now, getting some vital goals in this campaign. Currently, South Korea lead 1-0 over Syria. So if that result stays the same as this result here, then Iran will be so far behind, I think. Like, I think maybe too far behind to get automatic spots. Oh, deflection. Iran... No! Oh, that better not be Gushinejad. No, it's not. It's Karimi. He's equalised and that was just poor defending from myself and Japan. And that is 1-1 one, one now between the two. Carlos Quiroz looks happy about that. That might have saved Iran's qualifying for now. A draw wouldn't be a bad thing here against Iran. It's just that, you know, a win is better. I don't want to be struggling in this campaign. Although it's not uncommon oh there we go that's a header by honda and that's gone straight in for 2-1 honda comes up clutch now with only 29 minutes to play can japan hold on to this lead and that is going to be it japan have won two goals to one over iran uh honda's header was enough to get the win for japan and well i think iran are starting to slip away now so that's your table. Japan actually have a game in hand over South Korea. Um, and we have 14 points. Uh, then the UAE are in third. Iran are in fourth with six points. And even Syria have a game in hand on Iran. So even if Syria can get some points in the last two games, they might be able to steal that third place position so we have another derby match here against uh south korea i gotta say that south korea kit i never knew they had that but that's a really nice kit um compared to you know the plain red one there but that's a really nice design i kind of like that um but last time we played them it was a really really boring nil nil let's hope that it's not like this 
in the second match against these two guys. A through ball by South Korea. I missed the tackle. And that's actually gone in. Great move. And Ki Sung Young has scored for South Korea to make it 1 0. Okay, now we've got a game on our hands. In the last match, of course, against these two, it was 0 0 with only one shot each. Now we finally have something, but unfortunately, it was for the other team. And they seem to be really switched on Japan don't seem that switched on whether or not it's my tactics or my style of play I don't know it seems like we come up against a team like South Korea you know another giant and we just can't get the job done taken away there by Kagawa and Kagawa could do it no it's saved that's our first shot of the game believe it or not you know, they haven't had to do much to beat us here, I think. You know, it's not over yet, but I feel like they have beaten us already. It just feels like Japan are off the pace. And I kind of felt that from sort of like the a third way, a third of a way through this uh, group stage. That's a through ball and that's just caught by the goalkeeper. But yeah, it's just... Doesn't feel like we're all here against some of these bigger teams. Yes, we beat Iran in the previous match, and that was a good win. But here against South Korea, just doesn't feel like we're getting the job done. You know, I'm not saying that we should be beating South Korea all the time. You know, because in the previous match against them, we drew. But, you know, when we're going to the World Cup against teams like South Korea, for example, who do qualify from other confederations... It does leave me a little bit concerned. Syria and the UAE drew 2-2. So I believe that helps us out more than anything. Let's just have a look. Yeah, we're miles ahead anyway. So even if we lose our last match, um, it won't matter. You know, we'll finish second more than likely. So for this match against Syria, I've changed the squad a little bit. Because obviously, we don't need to play our first team against Syria. It's a done and dusted thing for Japan. Final match of qualifying then. Here we go against Syria away from home. And Syria desperately need a win in order to try and get those playoffs. I assume that Iran... Uh, or South Korea are playing the UAE, one of the two. Yeah, South Korea have already played all their matches, so the UAE are against Iran. That is a big game for third place. It's a ball by Syria, out of nothing, into the middle, and that just, like, scrapes past the post. It's going to be a corner to Syria. They're coming close. Japan on the ball, outside of the box to Nakamura. Still has it here. And that's gone in from outside the box. And Nakamura has scored to make it 1-0 to Japan. Obviously not the Nakamura from Celtic, but a different Nakamura. Don't know if they're related or not, or it's just a popular Japanese name. But he scores from outside the box to make it 1-0. It was good because we lost the ball, got it back, and we were able just to shoot. And it went straight in anyway. Crossed in by Syria. I tripped them up. That's going to be a penalty. Oh, my goodness. What am I doing? That might actually be a red card. The defending has been quite bad recently in these last few matches. Syria have the chance to level it up. And they have. It's 1-1. And that is Al-Khatib with the goal. The penalty to make it all square. Oh, that's a mistake by the Syrian keeper. And Lee has scored to make it... 2-1 to Japan, the reserve coming off the reserve bench to score the goal against Syria. That will be an important goal for him. And from that angle as well, he had no right in scoring that, but the Syrian keeper did let him pretty much with that terrible save. Oh no, Japan! Oh, Syria just put it wide. I tried to clear it and they stole it from me. And they had a free shot on goal and they put it wide. That would have equalised the whole match there. And, um, well, Syria blew it. It's going to be booted away here and that should be the end of the game. Yep, there we go. It's the end of the game. And Japan have won by two goals to one over Syria. Not the biggest result in the world. Um, it, they made it quite difficult for us. Um, of course, they only scored by a penalty. But...
again, we just found it difficult to break them down, even with, with the reserves here, you know, a fresh batch of attackers that have been not really doing an awful lot this qualifying series against the weakest team in the group, and we couldn't really get many more goals. That's why my concerns are kind of valid, in my opinion. Okay, so we have the draw. Um, we can't look at the group stages because once we finish the last match, it instantly just, just goes to the draw. It doesn't actually give you a chance to look at the group stages. So we're just going to have to do the draw first. So I'll do it as um, fast as possible. So Argentina and F, uh, Colombia and C. We have Oman in Group F alongside Argentina. Then we have Italy in Group H. And then uh, we got Peru. Going into Group D, we have Germany going into Group D also. We have Slovakia going into Group B. We also have Gabon going into Group A. That's pretty cool. Gabon don't usually make it on these games, but they did here. England going into Group D. We have Spain going into Group A. And then we have Cameroon going into F. We also have Switzerland into Group G. We have Hungary going into group f as well again hungary don't qualify that often on this game so that's pretty cool nigeria in group c we have zimbabwe going into group g wow first time ever for zimbabwe that's awesome welcome to the world cup zimbabwe we have uruguay going into group b we also have costa rica in group e then Norway in Group E as well. Some fresh faces. I mean, Norway did qualify uh, for a couple of World Cups back in the day. But on these games, not really that much. Japan have gone into Group H alongside Italy. That's not brilliant so far. And then next up, we have Poland going into Group E. In Group A, we have Brazil. We have Senegal into Group H as well. Okay, that's quite a strong group so far. Uh, France in Group B. We have Belgium in Group C. We have USA into Group G. In uh, Group B, we have South Korea. We have Uzbekistan in Group C. Nice. Some fresh faces for once. Uh, Mexico in Group D. Panama in Group A. Only a few more left. Scotland in Group G. There we go. There's Scotland. And then we have Chile in Group E. Who is in the last one with us? It's Russia. So we have Italy, Senegal and Russia to contend with. That's difficult, man. All right, then, guys. So the final portion of this video is just going to be reviewing the qualifiers because some of you actually like seeing how it went down. So the final round of Africa qualifying looked like this. So Nigeria beat Algeria 3-2. We then have Cameroon beating Ivory Coast 3-2, Gabon beating Togo 4-2, Zimbabwe beating Rwanda 2-1, and Senegal beating South Africa over the two legs 4-3. Incredible game. Uh, very lucky that Zimbabwe actually had Rwanda because, you know, it could have gone either way. They could have had, like, Nigeria or someone like that and just got absolutely slaughtered. So, congratulations to Zimbabwe for making it. In Asia, we already know our group, but in Group B, it ended Oman, Uzbekistan and Qatar going to the playoffs. So it was UAE versus Qatar in the playoffs. Let's see how that went down. It was 4-3 in the end to Qatar. Um, great match. Uh, UAE won the first leg 2-1 and then Qatar came back in the second leg and beat them 3-1. In OFC, New Zealand were the ones to win the OFC round and go to the playoffs. Tahiti almost did it, man. They were off on goal difference. Really, really disappointing to see Tahiti get uh, eliminated on goal difference there. In Carmabol, it looked like that. Argentina and Colombia having a head-to-head -head race for uh, top spot and Argentina won. Uruguay came third. Chile came fourth and Peru came fifth. Here are the two playoff results and Peru beat Qatar 4-2 over the two legs and then Panama beat New Zealand 2-1 over the two legs. In CONCACAF this is how it finished in the final round you have the United States, Mexico and Costa Rica going through. Obviously Panama made it via the playoffs. Haiti missed out by three points. It would have been so cool to see a Haiti versus Qatar matchup in that playoff round but sadly not to be but we got Panama instead so that's still kind of decent. 
And then finally, we go to UEFA. And there are some huge uh, teams and performances by some minnows and um, some big teams even missing out in the process as well. So in Group A, we have Italy going through automatically and Belgium going to the playoffs. Um, Czech Republic, Denmark and Wales didn't really have what it takes to match up with Belgium in that one to fight for playoffs. In Group B, Germany went almost perfect and Sweden made it to the playoffs. The Netherlands missing out on this World Cup by five points. Um, if you remember earlier on in the campaign when we reviewed it, the Netherlands were doing so bad and they were about to pick it up, but too little too late, I'm afraid. In Group C, Switzerland went through automatically and Portugal just beat Slovenia to that playoff spot. Um, Slovenia missing out on goal difference there. In Group D, Slovakia went through automatically and Bosnia went to the playoffs. Montenegro missing out by three points and Ukraine missing out by four points. In Group E, it was a bit of a shock seeing Norway qualify uh, automatically and Spain having to go through via the playoffs. All the other teams came kind of close but um, not to be unfortunately. In Group F a massive surprise in this group not because Russia topped the group. I'm talking about Azerbaijan going to the playoffs. Azerbaijan did so well to get 20 points in a group with Croatia, Russia and Ireland in there. Um, you know, Cyprus are beatable for Azerbaijan and so are the Faroe Islands. But, I mean, to beat the likes of Croatia and Ireland, that's crazy for Azerbaijan. They must have had some sort of golden run or something like that. In Group G, we have Hungary topping that group with 25 points and Serbia going to the playoffs. Again, Greece were about six points off in the end, so unfortunately for them, they couldn't make it. In Group H, we have England top of that one and then Poland going to the playoffs. Uh, Malta in that group getting 13 points. That's really impressive for a minnow like Malta. And in Group I, we have France going through top of the group and Scotland going through via the playoffs, Albania. Um, I'm fairly sure they were actually top when we last left them. Um, so they kind of fell off a bit towards the end. And finally, let's have a look at the playoff rounds. So Scotland beat Serbia 2-1 over the two legs. And then sadly, I mean, for me personally, sadly, Azerbaijan could not join the party as they fell 4-2 against Poland. I mean, you know, they are a bigger team. Poland beat them 3-0 in the first leg. And then Azerbaijan turned it around in the second leg. But it wasn't to be. They lost 4 or two in the end. It would have been so cool to see Azerbaijan join the party and alongside uh, Zimbabwe, but hey, we can't have everything, I'm afraid. Uh, Belgium beat Bosnia by four goals to one, and Spain beat Sweden over the two legs four goals to one as well. And that has been your whole qualifying process with Japan. Join me for part five as we try and navigate this really tough group in the World Cup. Very, very tough group there. Italy, Senegal and Russia. I'll be doing that in the next video. If you did enjoy this video, then give it a like and subscribe. Keep it local as always. And I'll see you again for the next video.